Welcome to Weekend Watercolour. This is an opportunity for you to use watercolour if you are a beginner and you're curious as to how it works and you just want to experiment and you're not really confident with your skills. It'd be an opportunity for you to experiment with what it can do and to get used to its capabilities before you get used to using it in a way and recreating final pieces. So with Weekend Watercolour, what I'm going to do with this series is work in my sketchbook with, but without a plan and have fun rather than be working on a final painting. So it's for people that are confident with their watercolour skills and just want to relax but also those of you that want to relax and find out more about what watercolour can do. So the first thing you need to do is to prepare your sketchbook. You can have any sketchbook, but I would suggest that you have a sketchbook that has strong cartridge paper. Sketchbook has watercolour paper in it. And if you would like to find out more about any of the products used in today's clip, then please look in the description below. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as I've said, I don't have a plan for any of these pages, which I think is the best way to be. It's about being more fluid with what you are doing and I made this a decision about five or ten minutes ago that I wanted to um, make something reflecting winter because we are going to have snow tomorrow and we haven't had snow for a very long time and I thought well how can I do that and make it interesting what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate two techniques that some of you may not have used before and you will be able to use very, very easily and have some very good effects. But what I would like you to do is experiment with them and then do something different from what I am doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm using my pastel palette. If you don't have a pastel palette, that's perfectly fine. You can just use a shade of blue and make a very watery back background. You could use wet on wet where you put water down first and then you put down your colour on top. But I am just using firstly a colour called Ice Blue and then I am using a stronger blue on top called Pool Party and then I am putting that on top just to create some effects. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cling film on top. Now the reason I'm doing that is I want to create a winter scene and by putting cling film on top that will create the effect of ice and when you, I peel it off later you will see how effective that is. For the sky I'm going to paint pool party on top also because that is a darker colour than the ice blue. And what I'm going to do, so when you put the cling film on, just crinkle it lightly so that you get those effects. And when you, when I peel it off later, you will see. And again, all of these techniques I'm doing are really easy and aimed at beginners. So now I'm going to paint the pool party colour. As I say, if you don't have access to these paints, you can use any shade of blue. That's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint in the brighter blue because I want it to be a bright winter sky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some salt and put that onto the sky when it's wet. But I'm only going to put a few little bits of salt. And again, when it's dry, you will see the effect that it's created. It's like a kind of snowy sky. Um, and again, these are effects that you can create really easily. <coughs>
have this winter landscape and this is your opportunity to think about okay what would I like to put on my winter landscape you could put some penguins some polar bears some people ice skating you can put whatever you like I've decided that I'm going to paint a tree covered in snow and I will show you how I'm going to do that do that but please don't feel that you need to do that you can put whatever you like because this is all about using your creativity so if you have a look in the swatch on the left hand side that will show you what colors I've used and I've now switched to my Winsor and Cotman palette and I'm going to be using Hooker's Green Dark I'm going to pick out where the leaves would be without the snow on them now normally if I was painting this on a blank sheet of paper I would leave areas where I'm putting the snow now because I've already put my background in because I hadn't I didn't have a plan about what I was going to do um, I've got the blue there so what I will have to do afterwards is use a paint called gouache now for those of you that don't know what gouache is it is a paint that is in between acrylic and watercolor in that it is opaque um, and it will sit on top of the watercolor and you won't see it I would not be able to use white watercolor on top because it would just sink straight into the watercolor so that is why I am using gouache if you don't have gouache you, you won't be able to put this on top um, so if you were going to paint a scene like this what I would suggest you do is maybe um, leave a gap for putting this tree in so I'm starting to pick out where the leaves would be without the snow and I am sketching them in in a kind of non-uniform way because obviously the, the leaves aren't going to be in a perfect order and I really like the way actually I've just noticed that the snow effect has appeared on the bottom area because it looks like it's catching the light of the highlights you can see some areas it's worked out really well anyhow um, getting back to painting the tree I'm going to paint in the areas with my small detail brush um, using hookers green dark and then what I will do in a moment is I will mix in some dioxazine purple and Payne's grey to make some darker leaves and the stem of the tree or the trunk of the tree and then I'll paint that in for some more definition Just to speed things up, I'm going to use the hair dryer on the tree leaves before I start adding the Winsor & Newton gouache because if not it may start to mix in with the gouache paint and I want the snow to look quite crisp. So I'm just putting the hair dryer on to dry the last little areas of the watercolour. So as I mentioned earlier gouache is a paint that is thicker than watercolour, it's more opaque but thinner than acrylic so it's in between the two and the reason I'm using this is because obviously I have created my background first which I wouldn't normally do but because this is a bit fun I wasn't didn't really have a plan and as I said you don't have to paint the tree you can paint whatever you like you can paint penguins you can paint polar bears you can paint people having a snow fight or snowman you can paint whatever you like but I've just decided to do that today if you are painting a snow covered tree just make sure that you put the snow in areas where you would expect the snow to fall so on top of the leaves and don't make it too uniform if it's too neat and tidy then obviously it's not going to look naturalistic so just place it very carefully with your small brush maybe have a few little areas where it's kind of within the leaves so a little few blobs here and there and then step back have a look just to check that it looks as it should do So 
when your scene is finished, whether you've decided to paint a tree or penguins or people having a snow fight or your snowman, what you can then do is get a toothbrush and add some of your gouache to the paintbrush and then start splashing that to your picture to create an effect of snowflakes. If you enjoyed this clip, then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour playlist and look out for future content in the watercolour weekend series. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip. And if you have any ideas for future content or questions, then leave a comment below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Thank you.